Praise the name of Jesus. Praise the Lord. It's amazing to be here. Um, as I was seated there, I kept remembering what it feels like to go back home. Um, and I was remembering way back in 1990 when I joined the university. And um, the first time I went back home, the thing with me and home is when I arrive, when my mom was there, I first go to the kitchen. And I would spend hours with mama, and I'm telling her they were teaching at the university quasi-affine operators in Hilbert space. Mama, they talked about Jacobians of transformations. Mama, things were amazing. There's something about going back home. And it's exciting to be in new life today. Um, one thing about new life is the music. And thanks, Edwin, for maintaining our standards. Those are our standards. When we are here with you, Mamanase, or Toyo, we used to sing like that. <laughs> I would like to thank the, the choir for beautiful singing. For breath of life. If I knew you guys were coming, I would have asked them to look for a different preacher. You know, there are events that match your standards. So I'm going to speak to the music council later on next time to do their homework. I, I, I appreciate your music. The instrumentalists and the choristers, amazing. Um, every time I've done projects and I've forgotten Kolo Jambi, I get into trouble. Collins, I appreciate you in advance because if I forget, it will happen again. Um, Collins and I, we are frenemies. You know frenemies? Best of friends, but our fights are unbelievable. Um, this morning, because I don't want to take too much of our time, I also want to appreciate Beulah and Zuri. Beulah is my son's classmate. They've been together from grade one, I think. So it's really nice to... Please don't bring such preachers before I speak. She has set very high standards. You are appreciated. Um, our message this morning is entitled, These in White, Who Are They? And, and the, the thing that led me, the inspiration for this message, I was adjudicating at a music festival in Eldoret the other day. And each day, I would adjudicate 30 choirs. Each choir would sing three songs. So it was an average of 100 songs per day. And we adjudicated for six days. That was 600 songs. The week after, I was unwilling to listen to music. It was too much. But then, one of the things that I enjoyed is they told me, wait for Thursday. Thursday, there will be singing. And those of you who attend these festivals, you know what I'm talking about. On Thursday, they were singing Bach's work and Handel and Mendelssohn. So it was quite something. And so every time they walked on stage, I would ask, who are these? Who are these? And so this day, we are going to use the book of Revelation, the most amazing songbook ever written. And we, there are a total of 27 songs, but we will focus on nine. And before we go into the message, I'm going to ask my friend Collins and the congregation to sing with me hymn 691. The hymn writer says, lead me, Lord, and lead me in thy righteousness. We will sing a lot during this message. And I don't do sermonettes, so don't think it is a brief message. Amen? 
Salmonets are for Christian nets and they did not come to church. Amen. So we're going to sing together hymn 691. Lead me, Lord, and lead me in thy righteousness. For it is thou, Lord, and thou only that maketh me dwell in safety. Hymn 691. Lead me, Lord, lead me in thy righteousness, make thy way plain be for my face, for it is Thou, Lord, Thou, Lord, only that makest me dwell in safety. Let's sing that song together. Let's go together. house of worship this morning we are here desiring to hear from you lord speak to your children this morning may i decrease as you increase is our prayer in jesus name these in white who are they this is the theme of this message this morning i am hoping that by the end of this message i would have spoken to what worship is I would have spoken to the role of song in worship. I would have spoken to the role of songs in eschatology. And then I would have spoken concerning the singers that are found in the book of Revelation 7 that are robed in white. I was reading a book in the course of this week. The book is entitled Desiring God. And the writer of the book, Desiring God, tries to define worship. And he says, true worship is valuing or treasuring of God above all things. True worship, valuing and treasuring God above everything else. Then I read another book, and the writer, this book is called The Worship of God. And Ralph Martin writes and he says, Worship is the dramatic celebration of God in his supreme worth in such a manner that his worthiness becomes the norm and the inspiration of human living. Someone else speaking about worship says, It is the process. Worship is a process that it is the process of it is in the process of being worshipped that God communicates his presence. I want to repeat that. It is in the process of being worshipped that God does what? Communicates his presence. And someone else speaking about worship says worship is seeing what God is worth and giving him what he is worth. If you remember the story of the three Hebrew boys, 
in the plain of Dura, when they were challenged to stand for God, they did not fear. They did not consider anything. They told the king to his face that we do not fear. They gave God what he was worth. And we saw God present himself as the fourth man in the fire. You remember the story? Worship is giving God what he is worth. And God responding by giving us his presence. What is the title of the message? These in white. Who are they? The role of song in worship. Somebody said, how would I have understood Amazing Grace? Had somebody not penned the words of the song Amazing Grace, how sweet the sound. I was listening to the lady who led us in prayer and she was wondering how I would have understood the friendship we have with Jesus. Had someone not written the words of the song, what a friend we have in Jesus. All our sins and griefs to bear. And saying what a privilege it is to carry how many things? Everything. To God in prayer. How would I have known this had somebody not put these words in song? Someone else says, how would I have known that in moments of despair and trouble that it can be well? Had somebody not written the song, it is well. When peace like a river attendeth my soul, when sorrow like sea billows roll, whatever my lot, the Lord has taught me to say what? It is well. The role of song in worship. I was listening to Beulah, and it's like you copied my sermon. You spoke about the songs of Moses, the songs of Miriam. You spoke about the song of which other lady? Deborah. But this morning, my focus will not be in those songs. I was reading the book, Testimonies to the Church, Volume 1, page 146. And when I read, Sister White was given an opportunity to go into the throne of grace. And this is what she says. I have been shown the order, the perfect order of heaven. And have been enraptured as I listened to the perfect music there. And she says, after coming out of the vision, when she left heaven and she came back, Edwin with all his sforzando and accelerando and diminuendo and allegro con fuoco, she says, sounded very harsh and discordant. But this morning, it is because of this that I want to focus on music in the book of Revelation. I mentioned that the book of Revelation is a song book. And the book of Revelation documents 27 songs. I am going to spend a bit of time on the ninth song. You know I love music, eh? I'm sure you know me. Usually when I'm invited, they say, Ujamana kuja kuemba, ataimba, and I will sing, because I love music. This morning, I want to walk us through the first nine songs. The book, and the reason why I've chosen the book of Revelation, and I expect to see you with your Bible, amen. We are going to walk through Revelation, nine, cha seven chapters of the book of Revelation, and see how much we can gain an understanding of how the angels worship in heaven, how the 24 elders worship in heaven, how the living creatures worship in heaven. And hopefully, that we may emulate the kind of worship that happens in heaven. The book of Revelation, when you read chapter 1, the word of God says that this is the revelation of Jesus Christ, which he gave to his servant to show him concerning things that must soon come to pass. What I love about the book of Revelation, chapter 1, verse 3, it says the following, Blessed is he that readeth aloud. Is that what it says? I am seeking that blessing. That's why I'm reading. Huh? 
I'm, a, I'm rather selfish. It says, blessed is he that readeth aloud the words of this book. Then it says, blessed is he that heareth. I am reading to you so that you may do what? Hear that you too may receive the blessing in the book of Revelation. Then it says, blessed is he that taketh heed the words of this book. The first song in the book of Revelation is found in Revelation chapter 1 verse 4. And I will read it quickly so that we get an idea of the first song. It is a doxology. By the way, doxology simply means a study of praise. Doxology is a study of praise. So the first song in Revelation is a doxology and it says, Grace and peace to you from him who is and was and is to come. From the sp seven spirits before his throne and from Jesus Christ who is a faithful witness. The firstborn from the dead and the ruler of the kings of the earth. The Bible says, to him who loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood. And what did he do for us? He made us kings and priests to our God and his father. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. That is the first song in the book of Revelation. And the book of Revelation is very musical. It appreciates the fact that in music there must be rests. Amen? So Revelation 2 and 3, there is no music. You're joking with the word of God. There is no music in Revelation 2 and 3. It speaks about the seven churches. The next time after the rest that you encounter music is in Revelation chapter 4. And the Reve Revelation, Revelation chapter 4 starts in an amazing manner. John says he was shown a door. That was open in heaven. And as he looked, he saw one that was seated on a throne. And the one seated on the throne was beyond description. Our God is beyond description. He says his countenance was like Jasper. And there was a rainbow around him. And as he writes, John says, before him were four living creatures. And there were 24 elders. I don't want to go into the prophecy because I'm seeing the way you've started looking at me. We are keeping it musical. The Bible says, when you read Revelation chapter 4, verse 8, that the four living creatures make a decision because they understood who God is. They understood the nature of our God. And there's a song they've been singing from eternity past. They are singing it currently, and they will sing it through eternity. And the song says, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty who was and is and what? And is to come. That song was so powerful. Lately when I attend Adventist music sabbaths, eh? you know, they start singing, you see, hear songs like, oh, Collins, Tutahenda huko tena, sisi, sisi. Um, and those songs can't last more than a week. Tutakula huko rojo rojo huko 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 tena. The song that the living creatures sing never gets boring. Never. The holiness of our God, His nature, the substance of our God, and the Bible tells me when good singing happens. When you read verse 9, when the 24 elders heard the singing that emanated from the four living creatures, the Bible tells me they did what? They fell down. They lay down their crowns. One of the things I realize in the book of Revelation, there's a lot of falling down. Hello? I will give you about six examples of what happens in heaven. Every time good singing happens, there is a falling down, a laying down of crowns and saying that he is worthy. The Bible tells me in verse 10 that after they heard the song, the 24 elders, those of us who love prophecy, they are proof that we have a God who is able to raise from the dead. The 24 elders are evidence 
that Jesus Christ, when he arose, he took captivity captive. And he took to heaven these 24 men as evidence that he is the resurrection and the life. And when these, because the Bible says they are dressed in white, showing that they've been washed in the blood of the Lamb, then the Bible says they sang. And they sang the song which said, You are worthy. O Lord our God to receive glory and honor and power for you created all things and by your will they were created and they have their being. There is something about the holiness of our God that the creatures in heaven understand that David almost understood. Hello. It is my prayer that we too may get a glimpse of this. Those that is the second and the third song in the book of Revelation. What I love about it is um, they speak about the lamb that was slain. There is a song that I would like us to sing together. And Collins told me of, he, does, he doesn't know it very well, so I will start. Hymn 154. I know he will catch up. I will start. The songwriter says, when I survey the wondrous cross, we'll sing the first answer, on which the prince of glory died. So, I will do something wrong, they'll catch up. When I survey the wondrous cross, on which the prince of glory died, my riches gain, I count but loss and poor contempt. We must sing that again. You can't do that to this song. Can we try it one more time together when I survey? When I survey the wondrous cross on with the prince of glory died my I riches gain I count but loss and poor contempt on all my pride. When I look at what happens before the throne of grace and I think about what happens when you choose the man of Calvary? You know, it starts making you su successful. Have you noticed? Those who choose Christ become successful, isn't it? They start having degrees. They walk around, you hear him called doctor. They start driving. The other day, a friend of mine bought a car, and I told him, did your machine come? He told me, brother, it's not a machine. It's a chariot. We lose. Don't drive machines. It's a chariot. The minute... You accept the man of Calvary. One of the things he does for you, he gives you things, he gives you grace, he gives you favor. But then the minute you survey the wondrous cross, all these things count like nothing. They are meaningless in the eyes, before the eyes of our Savior. I want to go to Revelation chapter 5. I told you it's a long sermon, amen? Revelation chapter 5, is amazing. The Bible starts by saying that John saw in the right hand of him that seated on the, on the throne, what? He was holding a scroll. It was sealed with seven seals. And then he hears a voice crying out loudly and saying, Who is worthy? Who is worthy to break the seals and open this scroll. So John looks around and he expects angel Gabriel to arise 
and to pick the scroll. He checks the seraphim. You know, they have these six wings. They are so mighty that if they came to destroy, they could obliterate this earth. But none of them is found. And the Bible tells me that John does what? He cries. Because he realizes that there is no one in heaven that is worthy to unlock the mind of God, to understand the things that are hidden in the mind of God. So he weeps. But then he hears a voice that tells him, do not weep. Do not weep. Because there is one. He is the lion of the tribe of Judah. The root of David. He has conquered. By the way, often in life, there are things that confound us. Things that make us give up. But beloved, I want to tell you, there is one who has overcome on your behalf. The lion of the tribe of Judah. The root of Jesse. The Bible says, as you read further down, that he is the lamb that was slain from the foundations of the earth. And the Bible tells me that that lamb that looks as if it was slain walks up and he picks the scroll. And beloved, look at the singing in heaven. When you go to verse 8 of the book of Revelation chapter, uh, chapter 5, it says, And when he had taken the scroll, the four living creatures and the 24 elders, what did they do? Remember my story about falling down. Hello? Rojo rojo ziko lakini. Nisawa. Kama ni rojo rojo nisawa. Lakini mbinguni. When they hear what Christ has done for them, they fall down. Each one had their harps. And they were holding golden bowls of incense, which are the prayers of the saints. And they started singing. One of the things about heaven, heaven is musical. You know, it starts with a quartet. Hello. Four living creatures. Then 24, small choir. Those of you who went to music festival. Small choir. And then it keeps increasing. Eh? Heaven, there will be a, a crescendo. I'm looking at the musicians. You understand crescendo? Poco a poco crescendo. Molimu. That's what happens in heaven. Listen to the singing. They say, and they sang a new song. And the song was saying what? You are worthy to take the scroll and to open its seals because of what? You were slain. And with your blood, what did you do? Do you know what Jesus did? He purchased for God. What Jesus did is amazing. He did something God could not do. Hello? The Bible says, you purchased for God persons from every tribe. The Abagere will be there. Amen? Abagere. Nani. Abagusi. Nani. He has purchased for God people from every tribe, language, and nations, and people. And what have you done? You have made them a kingdom and priests to serve our God. I don't know that you're understanding the way I'm understanding this. Do you know what Jesus has done for you? What he has made you become. Sometimes you walk like Umenyeshewa. Start walking like someone who understands what Jesus has caused you to become. You are a priest. You are royalty. That is what he has done for you. That is the fourth song in Revelation. The thing about the songs in Revelation is that they keep building on each other. The Bible says... Then I looked and I heard the voice of many angels. Numbering how many? Thousands upon thousands. And ten thousands times ten, time ten thousands. They encircled the throne and the living creatures and the elders. And in a loud voice, they started singing. Singing that inspires singing. And they're saying what? Worthy is a lamb. Who was slain to do what? To receive power and wealth and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and praise. People who understand usually say amen. amen. 
yeah, usually the problem is you're behaving like my maths class. When we start getting into those Jacobians, when I ask them, do you understand? They say, Mwalimu, tunenda kuelewa nyumbani. Please don't, I want you to understand this here. See nyumbani hapa. Yeah, that one we do during the week. Here we understand together. When these angels, numbering thousands upon thousands, ten thousand times ten thousands, when they sang, worthy is the Lamb. Verse 13 says, every creature, I told you that it is a crescendo, quartet, small choir, angels, every creature in earth, in heaven, under the earth, in the sea, they responded and they sang to him who sits on the throne and to the Lamb, be praise and honor and glory and power forever and ever. You're not the one to say amen. The Bible says the four living creatures said what? Amen. amen. And that's how, that's, this is a kind of singing in music in heaven. It is a crescendo starting from four to 24 to all the angels and then every creature. By the way, the book of um, Revelation chapter 5 is a sister to the book of Philippians chapter 2. I, I just want to digress a little. When you go to the book of Philippians chapter 2, it talk, from verse 5, the Bible talks about, says this, let this mind beware in you. That was also in who? The man, Jesus Christ, who did not consider divinity, the good things of heaven, things to be grasped, but he abased himself, taking the form of a man servant, and he died a death on the cross, so that at the name of Jesus, every knee should do what? Bow. Of things above the earth, of things on the earth, and things beneath the earth. There's a relationship between Revelation 5 and Philippians chapter 2 from verse 5. Every knee shall bow to the man of Calvary. We've done seven songs, and I've not even started my message. I was told 45 minutes, and I will be obedient. Uh, Revelation chapter 7. Again, Revelation 6, there is a musical silence in the book of Revelation. When you go to the book of Revelation 7, we encounter the 144,000 Students of prophecy, if we start here, we might not finish. Amen. So we'll make this briefer. Huh? There are many people who debate, are they literal? Are they symbolic? I put it to you that these guys, they are literal. The 144, I'm en en enacting a debate here. They are literal. Uh, a preacher called C.D. Brooks once preached a sermon. And he was saying that the devil has an argument with God. And he tells God that God, you can have an Elijah. You can have a Daniel. You can have a Joseph. You can have individuals who will stand faithful for you. But God, you cannot have a people. You can't. The 144,000 are evidence that God can have a people who can stand true to him. At the close of time, God will prove to all the universes, fallen like ours, never fallen, the other worlds that have never fallen, that God can have a people. Who will follow the Lamb whithersoever he goeth? Who will list to the call and to the commands without being forced? So the 144,000, they are evidence that our God can have a people. And beloved, it is my prayer that you can be part of that number. But in case you are giving up, let's go to Revelation 7 verse 9. This gives me a little hope. If the 144,000 Ningumu, the Bible says, and this is where our message comes from this morning. The title of this sermon was what? These in white, who are they? We have looked at seven songs in the book of Revelation. We want to wind up with these two. Speak about these in white, 
and then we will pray. The Bible says, after this I looked, and there before me was a great multitude. Beloved, I dream, I pray that you be part of that number. A great multitude that no one could count from every tribe, every nation, people, and language. And they were standing before the throne and before the Lamb. The Bible says they were wearing white robes. They were holding palm branches in their hands. They were victorious. They had washed their robes in the blood of the Lamb. Somebody says there is this blood that when you are washed in, you come out whiter than snow. That is what they had done. And they cried. Every time you see the word cry in Revelation, it says they sung in a loud voice. Salvation belongs to our God who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. The eighth song in the book of Revelation. They sung that song. I told you about falling down in heaven. Let's, let's see what happens next. There's a lot of falling down. So if you go to a music Sabbath and people are, okay, are doing that thing, good singing will always cause you to lay down your, th your crowns and to tell God that I am a sinner, have mercy on me. All the angels were standing around the throne and around the elders and the four living creatures. What happens? They fell down on their faces before the throne and worshipped God. There is singing that causes people to desire to worship God. And they were saying, they were singing, Amen. Praise and glory and wisdom and thanks and honor and power and strength be to our God forever and ever. Amen. And after these creatures sang, someone listened to the singing. Someone listened to the singing and could not help but ask the question this morning, who are these? The people who sang in Revelation 7, when we read the book of Revelation 7, verse 10, saying salvation belongs to our God who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. Who are these guys? Who are they? One of the 24 elders was curious. He wanted to understand them. What makes them tick? Why do they sing like this? Why is their singing different from the singing of the four living creatures? Why is their singing different from the singing of the cherubim with six wings and the, cher and the cherubs with four wings? Why is their singing different? I would like you to look at the response from verse 14. Man, there is singing up in heaven such as we have never known. For the angels do what? Sing the praises of the Lamb upon the throne. And the song says, holy, holy, holy is what? The angels sing. And I, this is me, I expect to help them make the courts of heaven ring. But when I sing, hello, when I sing redemption story, they will do what? They will fold their wings. They don't know what it means to be broke. Hello? I remember when I used to be a member of New Life and I used to teach the church choir. And my, my girlfriend, we were young. We were young once. Those of you who are in doubt, we would walk. We could not afford a bus. Hello? And we, we used to... Uh, those of you who understand New Life, some of you don't understand New Life, you used to worship in City Hall, eh? if you can remember. We did not have a church, so in the afternoon we would walk to Central Church. And the only youth who had a car was Ambrose Nyangao. You don't even know him. I'm just saying you don't know New Life. Only Ambrose had a car. Me and my girlfriend, after service, she used to stay with Sister Maureen. I would drop her in my Futsubishi in Kibera. As I proceeded, I used to live with Lame Kwafula. As I proceeded to Rerota, nowadays when I drive, it is far. 
the, 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 there, is, there are things that the angels cannot understand. I cannot believe I used to walk. It is far. But we would walk and we loved it. And we could not even afford lunch. We would come to town and we would buy a plate of chips. And we share it graciously. Thanking the Lord for his goodness. Amen. Amen. There are things that angels don't understand. You know, you, there's a loss in the family. You don't know where the next meal is coming from. You don't know where the school fees is coming from. Um, my sons are here. The other week I was so broke. Eh? Then my, my son comes from college. And you know he's leaving. And he's looking at me like, Daddy, can't you see I'm leaving? You can't notice I'm about to leave. <laughs> I'm saying bye. He, he actually wants to say, Daddy, see Utoboke. <laughs> but I, I, the fans aren't there. You know, Zakai has worked on me. James Z has not solved it. <laughs> so I'm saying, my son, uh, uh, see you. Eh? The Lord will be with you. <laughs> there are things that angels do not understand. But when they listen to us sing, they will ask the question, who are these? And the response is this, verse 14. These are they who have come out of the great tribulation. Not only have they come out of the great tribulation, they have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. They are before the temple, before the throne of God, and they serve him day and night in his temple. Beloved, I long to see you there. And he who sits on the throne will do what? He will shelter them with his presence. Beloved, a day is coming when God himself will shelter you in his presence. Verse 16 says, They will never again hunger. They will never thirst. The sun will not beat down on them. Don't scorch them with heat. Beloved, such a day is coming. For the lamb at the center of the throne, he will be their shepherd. And he will lead them. I heard my friends singing about two springs of living water. And God will wipe away every tear from their eye. Beloved, these are they, the endured trials and tribulation. Whatever you're going through, a day is coming. When the things you've gone through, you will remember them no more. Because the lamb before the throne will be the subject of your study eternally. And beloved, I would like this morning just to challenge all of us to make it our desire to be part of that choir that the heavens will question who are these guys who are these guys may you be part of that choir when we get to heaven and i would like to sing muskize maneno musiskize sauti um i don't trust me and collins i told you we are frenemies I had sent a track that he played for me, but he insists he wants to play live. I don't believe. Uh, hymn number 86. And I know you know the song. Wimbe kwa sauti ya chini kidogo. Uspeke volume. So singing hymn number 86. But I want to sing it in Kiswahili. Is that okay? Ya pote dunia 
Oni dege ui banavi sikia mili mau pende zama chosaram upe pona ona fura kia sing with me. did something. Um, he saved my life. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord prepare us to sing in that choir. Let none of us be found missing on that day. Let us pray. King Jesus, we've spent a few moments in your house reflecting on the nature of worship before the throne of grace. Lord, how the angels who have never sinned, how they adore you, O oh God. Father, we who are sinners, O oh Lord, how much more ought we to reflect on your grace and your goodness and adore you? Lord, you understand your children. We go through difficult moments this side of heaven. But Lord, I claim the words spoken in the psalm, where the psalmist says, I will lift up mine eyes to the hills from whence cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. Lord, you say you will not let our feet slip. You who watches over Israel, you will never slumber nor sleep. Father, you watch over our comings and our going. Lord, be with us. Now and forevermore is our prayer in Jesus' name. May the Lord bless you.